Well, all right. Today we're going to talk about the enemy that's in a me. <laughs> ah, I remember the first time I heard that. I was like, that's clever. I like that, though. And uh, what is being said there is that the enemy, which is basically for a lot of people, they're talking about the voice. And that that's the enemy because it's always trying to stop you. It's always trying to block you. It's always been negative. It's always, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, that thing where people talk about you got the angel on one side and you got the devil sitting on the other side, the other shoulder. And uh, and basically they're saying that that voice is that devil is trying to destroy you and, and you can't listen to it. And I hear more and more people talk about it like that, like, like you just have this demon inside of you that's trying to totally distract you and keep you from ever accomplishing. And But at the same time, which is funny to me, they'll have the conversation that the ideal of the, the, the mind is to protect you. And it's always going to, anything it can do to prevent you from injury is going to try and put those roadblocks there because that's its job is to keep you safe. So my thing is I sat back and I thought about that. I was like, why would I call someone who wants to keep me safe an enemy or a destroyer or a demon or a devil or whatever we want to call it? I'm just saying that don't, that don't make sense. If you're looking out for my best interests, you're the kind of person I, I kind of need in my life because it's nice to have people you know that got your back and, 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 and don't want to see you get hurt. The distinction, the difference that we have to understand is not that that's an enemy, but understand that it is going to look for methods to keep you from getting hurt, from experiencing pain. See, if you do something and maybe you got in a relationship and it hurt, then all of a sudden it's telling you next time it looks like you get ready to get in a relationship. It says, no, nah, that equals pain. <laughs> Woo! We, we got to get away from this new person because we know what this equals. It equals pain if we stay in this relationship. So you sabotage it and people go, yeah, see, that's that demon, that devil that destroyed it. It's like, no. Its job was to protect you. It's sitting there going, whew, man, I, we, we, we can't go because I know that was painful last time. So we're going to keep you from that. Haven't you had friends to do that? Things happen and they, they tell you stuff and you're sitting there like, I ain't listening to that. You know that they're trying to keep you from getting hurt. But at the same time, you're sitting there going, well, I'm not going to be scared. I got to go out and live my life. Folks, that, to me, that's the distinction. That's the difference you have to understand. Is that it's going to, if, if I know, and I always tell people, I just want to know who you are. Just be consistent. If you're a jerk, just be a jerk. That way I know who you are. Then I get to decide on whether I want to hang out with a jerk or not. Be consistent. The people I have a hard time with that are inconsistent, it's like, I got to be around you for a few minutes to figure you out, to figure out what's your mood where you're at right now, because one minute you're the happy go, hey, let's laugh, we crack jokes, and da, 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 and you jumping on their back, they're jumping on yours, and it's all, everything's beautiful. And, and then it, the switch hits, and all of a sudden you touch them, and all of a sudden they want to fight, or they scream at you like, don't touch me. And you're just like, whoa, where'd that come from? Because there's no consistency. Those are the tougher ones for me that I'm just like, ooh, get some consistency in your life. Learn how to separate, you know, just like those people that get mad at their partner and then take it out on the world. Folks, you got to get good at If you're mad at your partner, deal with that when you're dealing with your partner. The rest of the world don't need to be have that taken out on them. But anyway, it's a whole different conversation. But my thing is with the understanding that is here to protect you and it's always going to protect you, it's consistent. You know it's always going to take the safe route. It's always going to be looking after to try to make sure you don't experience any pain. You just have to get good at understanding, I know where you're coming from. But now I got to decide for myself if what you're telling me is going to restrict me from getting to where I want to go by taking the safe route. And there I go. That would keep me from getting pain. But 
I can never get across the street unless I go across the street. See, you're telling me, but what if a car comes too fast, we could get hit? What if we fall in the street on the way there and skin up our knee? See, you're giving me all the reasons to stay on this side of the street, but I want to go across the street. And, it's, and so it's going to give you all of the different reasons why that's a risk, why we shouldn't take that risk. Why? Not because it's your enemy. It's not sitting there going, I don't want to get you across the street. I know you believe there's pleasure over there, and I don't want you to experience pleasure, so I'm trying to keep you on this side of the street to keep you aware. That's not what it's doing. See, that would be an enemy, somebody that knows that there's success, there's excitement, there's joy, there's everything across the street, and they're trying to keep you from experiencing that. They don't want you to see the joy. They don't want you. That's not what is going on. It's trying to protect you. It's trying to say, but what if we get hurt before we get across the street? We'll never get the opportunity to, to experience that. So um, let's stay over here where we know what's going on. And, and it's safe right here. See, that's why I said understand the difference. And you got to be able to say, and I play with my voice. I actually be like, man, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that because that's some good insight. To me, when you get like that, this becomes you can have fun with the voice. You just go, I hear you. But I want to go across the street because I believe that there's some joy, there's some pain, there's some happiness over there. So I got to go. Now, you look out for the cars. <laughs> you make sure it's safe along the way because I know that's what you're going to do anyway. Why? Because that's what you do. You're looking to keep us from getting hurt, from getting ourselves in any position. So I hear you. Now, I got to go across the street. And you can, you can keep looking out for us. You see what I'm saying? Do it anyway. Now, people call that stepping outside your comfort zone. I don't buy into the comfort zone stuff. And I tell people, I said, it's, it's I use the example I used of um, we're all champions. And we were born champions. And by that, I'm saying we have the belt around our waist. We came into this knowing that we can do, be, and have anything that we want in life. The world taught us differently. And for some people, their pain levels are different. And some people, you could tell them don't cross the street because they could get hit. Boom, they're going to go sit down and go, whoa, I don't want to get hit. I definitely want. That's not comfortable. And that's what the world tells you is that, see, that person's comfortable. That's why they sat out. No, they didn't want to get hit by the car. They didn't want, they, they, they had a conversation with the voice that said, Yes, it would be pleasurable to cross the street. But the pain that we may not ever get there. So even though this is uncom not comfortable, which is the world keeps teaching you, this is not comfortable sitting on this side of the street when I know the joy is over there. I'm not comfortable. But I'm sitting here, I got a decision, I got two pains going on. The pain of, I could cr of sitting here or... The pain I could cross the street and get hit and never get over there. And I'm with those two pains, I'm just like, man, well, I know this pain. But man, that thought of getting hit by a car, it's like, oh, that, whoo, that's dead. You see, you're weighing two pains. This is, there's no comfort included in this. And the world keeps trying to teach people, got to get out of your comfort zone. No, that's not your issue. The challenge is the story that you're writing. You guys will hear me say that all the time. It's all about stories. The, the, the mind who's trying to keep you from getting hurt has told you one story. You have another story, which is what the pleasure you can receive from getting across the street. The challenge is which story are you going to buy into? Which story is going to become more real to you? The actions you take will tell you which story you bought into. If you stay on this side of the street, the story of the pain of getting hurt by crossing the street was more real to you than the actual pleasure you thought you would get from crossing the street. But again, this is not a person that's sitting there like, yeah, I'm cool. Because see, that's what to me comfort is. Comfort is a person sitting back like, yeah, I'm, I'm man, I'm good where I'm at. That's not where people are sitting. That's why we hear the conversation where we go, people are living a life of quiet desperation. Because that's where most people are. Most people are not happy in their lives. That's not a comfort zone. 
That's not telling you to get out of your comfort zone. That's telling you we got to reprogram the pain that you're in that is so much pain to stay there that you have to be willing to say, I got to go across the street because the pain of staying here is so painful. It's got to be more pain to stay here than to go across the street. You follow? Because whatever decision I'm going to take, we, we do things again for one or two reasons to avoid pain or bank gain. Avoid, avoid pain, but to gain pleasure. So if I have two pains in this particular instance, which one is more painful will know by the decision that I make. Because in this particular example, neither one of them are pleasure. This is not pleasure for me to stay on this side of the street. So I got two pains going on. Now, if I got pleasure on both sides, then I got which one is more pleasurable. I get to make that. So it's not saying it's going to always be pain versus pleasure. I'm not saying that. It could be pain versus pain, pleasure versus pain, uh, uh, versus pain or pleasure versus pleasure. But the key is understanding the difference in making decisions accordingly and not looking at the voice as an enemy that's enemy and trying to destroy me and trying to tear me down and to keep me from accomplishing because it's not. It's actually your one of your best friends, if not your best friend, because it's really trying to keep you to make sure I keep you safe. I don't want you to feel any pain. And I'm going to do everything I can to keep you from ever experiencing pain because we, when we crossed that street before, man, we had some pain. We remember that, right? We don't want to do that again. So it's trying to protect you. Understand the difference, but you have to be able to say, okay, now, let me weigh these stories, all the different options I have. I can stay over here because I did cross the street once before and, and I did experience some pain, but I know over there it's a lot of pleasure too, you know, and I'm using this as an example of getting in relationships. You, you, you figured getting in a relationship was pleasure. You tried it once. It didn't work. There was some pain. Now you got pain of being alone, pain of getting in a, in a relationship. You guys follow where I'm going? This is not comfort where they're comfortable just being alone and they just don't want to take a risk. No, that's not what's going on. See, that's why I said we're making life way more complicated than the things that we're teaching people. I just want you to understand what's going on here. And that's my objective is always to try to simplify this stuff. And I said, because what's really going on is you got two pains. You got a pain of being alone because you really want to be in a relationship. And for a lot of you that are running around talking about you're okay with being single, you have to decide, is it really that you okay with being single? Or is the reason that you're single is because of the pain that you link to getting to a relationship? See, that's a total different uh, conversation. And that's not a comfortable conversation where people go, well, you're just comfortable. That's a conversation you have to come, become real with yourself and go, what's really going on? Why, what's the real reason that I'm still single? And is it because I've linked up so much pain to getting into relationships because of the past? Now, see where the pain, now I got the pain, two pains again, the pain of being alone, the pain of being in a relationship. Depending on my actions is which pain is more real. Comfort is not even in this conversation. Comfort's not in there. The world will tell you why you're staying single because that's comfortable for you. It's not. You <laughs> see that? That's what I'm getting. It's not. They're not comfortable being single. They've accepted being single because they've linked up. It's so much pain to be in a relationship, but they're not comfortable being single. Because when they get alone, even the people that play that game in front of you, when they get alone, the person they can't lie to is the person in the mirror. It's a lot of people that really aren't happy when they talk to that person in the mirror. The world, they say, no, I'm cool. I'm good. But see, you can't lie to the person in the mirror. That's when you have to have the real conversation. And that's really, again, the purpose of this video is to say, the voice is not an enemy. It's not trying to destroy you. It's not all the, the things that people keep putting out there about it. Like it's, it's like, like you were born with this demon inside of you who's determined to destroy you. Folks, I don't buy that. I do think it's there to protect you from ever experiencing pain. And because of that, it links up. Like if you, if you fell off the couch 
it links up falling off the couch equals pain. So if it's ever in a position where it looks like you might fall off the couch, it's going to get you to adjust. Why? Because it's linked up. It's not because it's trying to keep you in a comfort zone. It's linked up falling off the couch equals pain. And so it wants to keep you from the pain. So again, I think I've drilled that enough that you guys got it. Understand, use it to your advantage. As I always say, stories are everything. And we get to understand, at least from the voice perspective, it's not an enemy. It's actually there to help you, to protect you, to keep you from pain. We just have to decide on, you know what? Sometimes I got two pains going on. The pain of just sitting here and the pain of what could happen if I cross the street. But I do understand what I want is across the street, which is what people call stepping out of your comfort zone. But to me, it's, it's not a comfort zone. It's stepping out of the two pains. that are, You have to decide. It's more painful to sit here knowing that there's pleasure over there. I have to switch that story around to the, the fact, and that's what I was getting to. I have to get to the story to where it's more painful for me to sit here than the pain I could receive by actually crossing the street. And when I can switch that thought process, I can cross the street. Um, I had a gentleman, and, and, and I was using this, and this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You know people that come down the side of buildings or skyscrapers, and uh, they clean the windows and stuff? And I remember I used to share all the time. I say, yeah, that's because, I, you know, because I teach. There's no such thing as fear. The world keeps telling you you got to overcome your fear. To me, this is the same conversation um, when we're talking about the voice and safety, the comfort zone and all that. And to me, fear falls in that same category. People go, you got to overcome your fear. Fear ain't your problem. It's the stories that you wrote. And here's a perfect example of why I say that. Because I used to share that the person coming down the window that cleans the window has a different perspective than me who doesn't come down the side of the windows. So one day I was living in this one, I was living in Redondo Beach. I lived in a, a tall, really tall building. And so there was a guy coming down the side of the building. So I decided to ask him. I was like, man, what made you do this, you know, as a living? And he's like, man, it's like an adventure. He said, when I was little, I loved climbing trees, getting off, jumping off of roofs. He said, all this kind of stuff. He said, man, my adrenaline starts flowing. He's like, man, it's just exciting. And he said, so this to me is not a job. He said, man, this is like an adventure. I just love it. And I'm sitting there going, see, that's why he comes down the side of the building and washes windows. Me, my thought process, my stories that I have linked to that is coming down the side of that building, there's a chance that rope could break. And if that rope snaps, I don't even want to think of what's going to happen after that rope snaps. So because of the story that I've linked to that, that's why I don't come down the side of the building. The world calls that fear and says, you got to overcome your fear. Fear ain't my issue. It's the story that I wrote. If I change my stories and believe the same way he does, you follow me? Take his story, make it my story, believe it. I'll come down the side of the building just like he did without ever having overcome what the world is calling fear. I remember sharing the same example with a gentleman one time. We were talking about an airplane. He was like, I said something like, yeah, I ain't jumping out of an airplane. And I'm like, shoot, if the plane landed, I'm landing with the plane. Ain't no reason for me to be jumping out of a good plane. He's like, well, Ron, if that's a fear, you need to overcome your fear. And I said, who told you that lie? No, you don't. You only need to overcome things that are blocking you from getting where you want to go. See, that's a, see, that's the stuff that, again, why I said I'm trying to simplify stuff. I said, you don't have to overcome everything. I don't like snakes. I'm not getting ready to go play with snakes. and over Why? Because the snakes don't play a role in my life. There's no reason that I need to go around snakes. And, and, and I don't ever want to get caught with a shark. I ain't getting ready to go swim with sharks. Now, I know people do that, but I'm not getting ready to go hang out in, in there with sharks to overcome my fear. You see, that's not the issue. And like I told him, that's, that's a bad example that the world keeps sharing. You don't need to overcome your fear. You only need to overcome things that are blocking you from getting where you want to go. And I said, even though I said I would not jump from the airplane because the plane is going to land. If you told me the plane is about to crash, everybody's jumping, including the pilot. You got a choice. Either you jumping or you hitting that mountain with the plane. You guys follow? Guess what? I got the parachute on. Ron's out the plane. Why? This ain't a fear issue. My story changed. See, they changed the story from this is not a choice anymore. As far as I'm concerned, because you always got a choice. I could just crash with the plane. 
but what I'm saying in this particular example, I'm like, oh no, this ain't a, do I jump? Do I not jump? Oh, I got a fear of heights. I got, no, I got a fear of death. No, <laughs> if I got a fear, but I'm just saying, but you guys know, I just said, I don't buy into the fear thing to begin with. That's not your issue. It's the story that you wrote. Change the story. You change your actions. It's that simple. Fear is not your problem. You got to visit the story that you wrote and you'll know why you believe and think the way that you think. Again, don't make this complicated. So anyway, uh, man, I got off track track here. Forgot we were talking about the enemy that's in me, which is still stories. Folks, get control of the stories. Understand the enemy is not in you. There's a person that's there, the voice, whatever you want to call it, who's actually there to try to make sure you don't get hurt. You just get to decide on if it's playing too safe. And again, it's not to mean you're in a comfort zone. It could be you're in a comfort zone. Most people, it's not. It's that the story that they wrote has pain attached to it, but they've attached more pain to doing something differently. And which is why a lot of times people stay at jobs they don't like. Not because they're comfortable in their current job, but they're so fearful of going into a new job because they don't know what that other job entails. They know this one, even though they don't like it. They know what this one entails. And they can live with this pain, but it's not because they're comfortable. They can take this pain versus the other pain. You guys got it? So, but anyway, as you know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Uh, and again, if you're not having fun, you guys know, like I said, you should be doing something else. Understand, quit fighting that person inside, that voice, whatever you want to call it. Um, read the book, uh, what is it, The Untethered Soul, uh, Michael Singer, awesome book, talks about the voice, being able to understand you're the person that's observing. The voice is just there. And um, take control of this thing we call fear, this thing we call comfort zone, and understand it's not an enemy that's enemy. It's actually someone that's looking out for me. All right, take care. Talk to you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.